Let me go to work in the Bible. Ecclesiasticus. Verse 46, we'll begin there. Or rather, chapter 46, verse 1. Mm -hmm. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 46. <clears throat> and we'll start reading at verse 1. All right. Jesus, the son of, the son ate naive, was valiant in the wars. Read that again so folks can understand what you're saying. Why sure the son, a naive, was valiant. Jesus, the son of naive. Now, naive. remember the Bible expressed in different languages. Is Joshua, the son of Nun. Oh. In another language, Nun is pronounced naive. The English language, Joshua is pronounced Jesus. In the Hebrew language, Jesus is pronounced Hoshua. So Nave is none. Right. Do you get me? Amen. All right. I just want to make sure you're clear. Amen. All right. Jesus the son, a Nave, was valiant in the wars. And was the successor, and was the successor of Moses. That's not talking about Jesus the Christ. Right. It's talking about Joshua. Right. He was Moses' successor. Yeah. It's good to know that <clears throat> if you're not going to be around, whoever come after you will keep up the journey. Amen. That's right. Isn't it? Yes. Amen. God blessed Moses with that knowledge before Moses died. Yeah. I don't say I'm going to die anytime soon. At least I don't believe I am. Right. I know some will be glad if I died tonight. <laughs> My Lord. <laughs> and some of them are members of First Church. Lord. Or should I say, they hang around. Mm. They're just here. But all that was of Israel did not enjoy the fact that Moses was living. No. You know why? Because Moses didn't give them what they want. Yeah. Moses gave them what they needed. Right. A real man of God ain't sent to give you what you want. Right. He's sent to give you what you need. And in most cases, what you need, you ain't going to like it when you get it. That's right. When I was a child, my mother gave me three sixes and all that nasty cast oil. It was what my body needed. Yeah. Kept me from catching colds and whatnot. Didn't like it. So if I'm going to die, one, do not, do not look for a Jennings. That's right. Don't look for someone that got the same name as mine. That's, that's vain. Amen. Don't look for none of my four sons. Right. If they don't measure up to the qualifications, they will die, my sons. That's it. That's right. Not a preacher. That's I remember right. my third oldest son, Reds, when I played the organ. He always was fascinated when he was a little baby with me being in the polar pit. And I remember on Frankfurt Avenue one day, before we got in the main auditorium up there, we was downstairs and I was done preaching. And somebody had the home video camera on, mm. videotaping the service. And after I was done preaching, <laughs> they zoomed the camera in on Reds. And Reds used to have a habit of sucking his tongue and playing with his ear. So Reds, snuck around out of a chair, snuck to the side of the pulpit, looked around, crept up the steps, got up on the pulpit, looked around again. He had no idea the video camera was on him. And 
went up to the microphone and just started just talking to himself. <laughs> Looking around. And when we got upstairs in the main auditorium of Frankfurt, when I would be done preaching, he had come out from the chairs and come up to where the pulpit was and come up on the steps and just sit on the steps. He loved the people that pulpit is. Now that he got older, <laughs> he told me one day, I don't want no parts of preaching. Hmm. He said, Pop, you got a hard job. When God sends someone and then when God get ready to kill him, My Lord. then if God sends someone, the one that come after him do not have to be related. That's right. This kind of teaching must be instilled in God's people. Because God's people is prone yeah. to look for someone that have the exact same name of the original one that led them. That's right. If you don't believe me, you examine 99.9 .9 of churches. If the bishop have died, the one that's in the pulpit now somehow is related to Bishop Lucifer. That's right. If Bishop Smith died, there's a Junior Smith. Amen. Bishop Williams died, there's a nephew or a son, some type of connection. Right. That's right. Church have been made like the mafia. Yeah. Keep the racket in the family. That's right. That's right. Where the only name that has power in here is the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Are you listening? Amen. So if I die, mm. if I do, and the lot fall on another, yeah. they have to keep the people yeah. on the same journey. If they come up and say, well, I got a revelation that Pastor Jenner didn't have, believe it not. Don't believe it. Because a minister can't know more than an apostle. That's right. That would make God a lie. That's right. Secret things are revealed to an apostle. That's right. The ministers have to get theirs from an apostle, then an apostle got to get his from God. From God. That's protocol. Amen. 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 <laughs> I know some don't like that, but what do I care? Amen. That's the way God set up the church. Yeah. I remember my brother was in Minnesota one day and he was telling the people, I'm going to tell you something you ain't never heard. <laughs> and I guess he thought the people would take it and they called me. So I wait till he got back. I said, what can you tell anybody that they ain't never heard? How are you going to assume they haven't heard me preach a particular thing yeah. when you ain't around? True. Not only that, how can you assume that what you're preaching is correct? That's right. He said, well, I thought, I said, that's where you lie. Yeah. The Bible said, lean not to thine own. Oh, I, understand. I don't care if you're related to me. When it comes to God, I ain't related to nobody. That's right. When that's it right. comes to feeding God's people, they must be fed right. Amen. Or don't eat. Don't eat. Huh? That's right. Amen. That's true. Uh, if I'm used to getting Hallelujah. protein, nutrition, and if I love my body, I don't have to settle for junk. Go ahead. Am I right, I said? That's right. And if I love, one scripture says, no man hateth his own flesh. Flesh. If I'm used to eating collard greens and turnip greens and all that good stuff and pinto beans and navy beans and amen and kale and bok choy and all the good stuff my body needs, I don't have to settle at a table eating M&M's and sugar cane and yeah. amen Mikey Nikes and good and plenty and a plate full of licorice stick. That's right. Because something tastes good, that don't mean it's good for you. Amen. Am I right, I said? Amen. 
Go ahead. This body yeah. is your temple. Oh, yeah. So if you are careful in what you eat naturally, should you not be more careful yeah. what you digest spiritually? That's right. That's right. There's a natural diet and there's a Holy Ghost diet. For the ear trieth word. Listen at the word of God. Now in the book of Job chapter 34 and at verse 3. You got to separate relatives from Bible. Yeah. Did you hear what I said? That's true. God ain't kin to nobody. That's true. They got to be a separation. Yeah. From God and relative. That's right. God, That's right. You can't even lead the people right caught up in your old family. Amen. You better be caught up in God. I don't care if it's a, a, a minister. A minister cannot even preach the word of God right God. if he's caught up in his family more than he caught up in God. That's right. First in the book of St. Matthew, chapter 12. Solomon. And we'll start at verse 46. I know the thing is on working on this, but I'm going to go with the sway of God. Yeah. I don't seek to persuade nobody. Paul said, do I seek to persuade men or is it God? Oh, God. Listen. Matthew 12 and at verse 46. All right. While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without. Jesus is talking to the people. Yeah. His mama and his brethren and his brother stood without. They was out there. Desiring to speak with him. They wanted to talk to him. Then one said unto him. <laughs> Yeah. That's right. They wanted to talk to yeah. their brother, and mama wanted to talk to her son. That's right. Mm -hmm. Then one said unto him, What? Behold thy mother. Hey, hey Jesus. Mm -hmm. Your mama. And thy brethren. And your brothers. Stand without. They standing out there. They waiting to talk to you, Jesus. Desiring to speak with thee. Do you hear all this Bible? Amen. What was Jesus' response? But he answered and said unto him. Give chapter and verse again. Now in the book of St. Matthew 12, we're at verse 48. L look at Jesus' response. But he answered and said unto him, that told him, who is my mother? Oh. Hmm. Do you see the disconnection? Amen. Here they looking at the flesh, he looking at the spirit. Right. When you married to someone that's sent, you can't have them to yourself. <coughs> I'm glad my wife, she knows that. She ain't got no choice but no choice but to know it. Yeah. She got to share me with everybody. Mm -hmm. And she don't always like it. Yeah. So I said, if I was married to you, I wouldn't mind. You liar, you are the devil. <laughs> Amen. You ain't got that to worry about either. <laughs> And ain't no woman that's in love with a man wanting to share him with everybody. No. No woman. No. Not if she got good sense. Amen. Amen. She don't want to share me with me with everybody. No. Listen, I deal with you, and I don't even want to always deal with you. True. It's true. And I'm not married to myself. That's right. I deal with you because the Bible requires me to. <laughs> Left up to me, huh? I go home and get in my hammock outside under a shady tree and stay there. Stay right there. And look and wait till I see Jesus come in the heavens. My wife had to ask me, you coming to church today? No. What are you doing? I'm waiting for Jesus. <laughs> you mind bringing me some more tea? I'm waiting for Jesus. <laughs> Only thing got me dealing with you is because it's my job. That's right. That's it. Hallelujah. You walk around and think I love doing that all the time? No. No way. Not all the time. Some of y'all just as hard head as the devil out of hell. And disrespectful as Satan himself. My Lord, my Lord. Huh? Amen. Listen. But he answered and said unto him that told him. He answered and said unto him that told him. Who is my mother? Who is my mother? Look, look at Jesus. Mother. Look at Jesus. Amen. Who is my mother? Now Amen. you would think that's disrespect, wouldn't you? Yeah. 
You were just thinking that? Someone said, well, why would Jesus respond like that, Pastor Dennis? All they did was tell the man his mama want to see him and the brothers want to see him. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. You see how beautiful it is? Amen. Look at what Jesus said. But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother? Who hmm. is my mother? Mother. Mother. What else? And who are my brethren? Jesus took it deeper than what these folk was talking. Yeah. But what? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven. Uh oh. Whosoever. Whosoever. That means this. You can be related naturally. Yeah. And still an enemy. That's right. That's right. Let me show you this. James 4 and 4. James 4 and 4. You can be naturally related. That's right. And spiritually disconnected. James chapter 4 and verse 4. Says what? Ye, ye adulterers. Say, read that again. Ye adulterers. Sound like you're galloping there. <laughs> ye, ye adulterers. Ye adulterers. And? And adulteresses. Says what? Know ye not that the friendship uh -oh. Uh -oh. of the world. Do you know that the friendship of the world? Is enmity with God. That means the friendship with sinners. Yeah. Suppose it's your blood brother. Is enmity with God. Amen. Suppose this your sister. Is enmity with God. A sinner. Mm. And a saint. Amen. Will clash. Oh yeah. That's right. Am I right? That's right. Two different minds. Two different minds. Two different hearts. Yeah. And you're subject to two different things. That's right. Kind of mind is not subject to what? Law of God. To God's law. Yeah. Neither indeed can be. Can be. All right, come on. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the fringe of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Whosoever? Whosoever, therefore. Whosoever. To associate with a sinner don't mean you're friends with him. Right. Because everybody in here associate with sinners. That's right. Someone said, I don't, liar. That's a lie. If you got a job, you're associating with sinners. You got to associate. It's true. It's you true. go to the doctor, center. Center pulling your teeth. <laughs> That's right. Center for an eye doctor. Yeah. You go to a clothing store, you buy them from centers. That's right. Come on. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Yes. Do ye think that the scripture saith in vain? The spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy. Amen. You think the Bible said that for nothing? For nothing. All right, let's go back and see what they said to Jesus. Back in Matthew chapter 12 at verse 46. While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without desiring to speak with him. Yes. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to speak with thee but he answered and said unto him that told him who is my mother and who are my brethren all right saints so the scripture is saying here we're going to pick up from where pastor left off let's read it again my brother back at uh, matthew 12 and verse 46 while he yet talked to the people behold his mother and his brethren stood without desiring to speak with him uh-huh 
Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without. The scripture says, Then thy, thy father, thy mother, and thy brethren stand outside, uh -huh. desiring to speak with thee. They would like to talk to you. But he answered and said unto him that told him. But Jesus answered and said unto them that told him, What was it? Who is my mother? And who are Jesus my Jesus here is saying, Who is my mother? Mm -hmm. And who is my brethren? In other words, what are they? Yeah. The scripture here, Jesus, my God, is not going the way of the carnal mind. Right. Is that right? Yeah. My God. In other words, he's saying, who are they? How significant are they? Yeah. Is that right? Amen. Who is? Who is my mother? Who is my mother? And? And who are my brothers? Who are my brothers? In other words, how significant are they? Yeah. Do they have any significance? Yeah. Because to Jesus, my God, on another occasion, my God, when he was talking about his, uh, his mother, Mary, my God, he says, uh, what have I to do with thee, woman? Yeah. Is that right? That's right. My God, because he was at the Canaan of Galilee, is that right? Right. At a wedding, is that right? Yeah. My God, and he says, what have I to do with thee, what, woman? Right. Again, that sounds very disrespectful. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. But he wasn't being disrespectful, my God. You have to remember who Jesus was. Yeah. Jesus Christ was God Almighty. Is that right? Yeah. The one that made Mary, the one that made the brethren. Yeah. Is that right? The one that made the world they were standing on. Yeah. So when he said to Mary, my God, what have I to do with thee, woman? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing here. He's yeah. saying, what have I to do? Well, who are these people? Right. What significance do they have to me? Right. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Because remember, my Jesus, my God, he himself, my God, just used the body of Mary, my God, to come into the world. Because remember when Jesus came here, he came, my God, to redeem us. Is that right? right? My God, so it was needful for him to be, my God, in the flesh and associated with the flesh because sin occurred in the flesh. Right. So for him now to put sin down and get victory over it, my God, and create a pathway for us to follow, therefore, my God, he came, my God, in the likeness of sinful flesh. Right. Is that right? Yes. Who were his brethren and who was Mary? They were, my God, sinful flesh. Right. Is that right? Amen. So when the scripture is saying here, my God, who is my mother? Who is my mother? Who is my mother? Who, what significance does she have? Yeah. Is that right? Amen. And who are? And who are my brothers? Who are my brethren? What significance do they have? Right. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Because remember now, my God, he's not related to them, my God. Is that right? Right. My, because even Joseph, my God, who was supposed to be his father, some thought he was his father, and Joseph was not his father. Right. Is that right? That's right. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yet Mary and Joseph had the title parents when it came to Jesus. Yeah. Did he not? That's right. Let's certify this brother. I believe in the book of uh, the book of Luke. I believe it is mm -hmm. Luke chapter two. I believe it is. Uh, let's try that. Luke chapter two, Luke chapter two, verse twenty-six. Luke chapter two and at verse twenty-six. Yeah. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost. Revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost. Let's read the verse above that so we can get the sense. Luke chapter 2 at verse 25. Uh -huh. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. Uh -huh. And the same man was just and devout. The same man was just and devout. In other words, my one that feared God. Is that right? Mm -hmm. All right. Waiting for the consolation Waiting of for Israel. the consolation, my God, of Israel. Because Israel, they were promised a savior, you know. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Is that right? Amen. Moses told them they were going to raise a man, like, a prophet like me. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So they're waiting for the consolation of Israel. Right. And what else? And the Holy Ghost was upon him. The Holy him. Ghost was upon him. He did not receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, but the Holy Ghost was upon him. Right. He did not receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, but the Holy Ghost was upon him. Was upon him. He did not receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, but the Holy Ghost was upon him. Right. There's a difference. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. All right. And it was revealed unto him, it was by, revealed unto him by, the, by God uh -huh. that he should not see that death he should not die before he had before seen, the, he had Lord's seen the Lord's anointed. Right. Before he had seen the one, the minister, the one that God would make my God and come into the world. Before right. he had seen the Son of God. Right. Before he had seen God manifest in the flesh. That's right. He was not going to die. Is that right? Amen. So what happened? And he came by the Spirit into he the temple. He came by the Spirit. In other words, he was directed by the Spirit uh -huh. into the temple. Into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child <laughs> Jesus. Amen. 
parents. What are we certifying here? That my God, although my God Mary's body was used, my God, for the Lord Jesus to hide himself in, and my God to take flesh, my God, to come into the world, my God, although my God, Joseph is referred to, my God, as his father, is that right? Right. My God, some people thought that he was his father. Right. My God, he had no, uh, no relationship, my God, to Jesus. That's right. Yet, my God, both of them, Parents. Both of them were called parents. They were still called what? Parents. Still called parents, which lets us know today if you adopt a child, brother and sister, you still have the title of what? Parents. parents. Although you're not the natural parent, my God, of that child. That's right. Is that right? That's right. Is that right? Amen. My God. So, my God, Jesus, although they even carry the title parent, Jesus is still saying, what the significance does Mary have to him? Right. Who is my who mother? Who is my mother? And, is that right? right? And who are? My brethren. Who are my brothers? What significance do they have? Right. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Because the only significance we have with God is unless we do God's will, you know. That's, that's it. Is that right? That's right. Is that right? Amen. What it says? And he stretched forth his hand, he stretched forth his his hand disciples. towards his what? Toward his disciples. Towards his disciples. And said, Behold my mother. Said, Look now, here is. Behold my mother. In other words, these are the ones that have significance. Right. He's not saying that the men here, my God, give birth, my God, like a woman because he's given them the title mother. He's not saying that. No, no. He's saying who has significance. Right. Is that right? Amen. Who has significance? These are my what? Mother. Is that right? And? And my brother. In other words, these are the ones that have meaning, my God. Is that right? That's right. These are the ones, my God, where my love is. Is that right? Amen. My God, is that, is that right? Yeah. These are the ones that have significance to me. Yeah. Is that right? Behold my... And said, behold my mother. Behold, look, my mother, yet none of them gave birth to the body. That's true. Did they? That's right. That's right. Men can't give birth to the body. No. Is that right? Yeah. Yet, my God, the Lord is putting the title mother, yeah. my God, upon the men. Yeah. Upon the disciples. Is that right? Amen. Is that right? Because, my God, they will come along later on, you know, my God. They will, my God, bring along children. Yeah. Is that right? right? Later on, the apostles, my God, they'll bring along children. Is that right? That's right. Is that right? Amen. And they'll have both the nature, my God, of a man and a woman. Because, my God, bringing along children, my God, my God, they're going to have to bring them up. In the nurture of God. Is that right? Through and by the preaching of God's word. That's right. Is that right? Amen. At the same time, they're going to have the nature of man because they're going to have to spill what? Seed. seed. That seed is going to be what? The word. The word. Is that right? Yeah. And when, my God, they preach the word, my God, that's like spilling seed, you know. Is that right? Yeah. My God, so that Christ can be formed in the folk. That's right. Then they become, become little babes yeah. and grow up. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. And have significance in the sight of God. Yeah. Is that right? So when he looked at his brethren, my God, he said, Here behold, my what? And he stretched forth his hand to his disciples. And said what? And said, Behold, my mother. Look now, my what? My mother. My mother and? And my brethren. And my what? My brethren. And my brethren. Is that right? Amen. My God. In other words, my God, this is my family. Yeah. Is that right? That's right? This is my family, brother, because there's one. This, this family here on the earth got to have the same name. Is that right? Yeah. My, is that right? That's right. Because there's a family here on earth, and there's also a family in heaven. In heaven. Is that right? Yeah. My God, but one name, that one name is going to bring us all into one family. I said the book of Philippians, I believe it is. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. My God, remember now the purpose of God coming here, my God, is to create, my God, and bring a people back to himself. To redeem him, re redeem the folks, my God, in the world, my God, who are living in sin back to himself. Is that right? Is that right, saints? That's right. So therefore, my God, the church, my God, itself is restored as a woman. Is that right? Amen. Is that right? Amen. At the same time, the church itself is, this, is classified as a son. Yeah. Is that right? That's right. In other words, my God, the function of a woman and the function, my God, of a man, my God, going to be right in the church. Yeah. Is that right? Amen. My God, the word has to be preached is as a man, my God, giving seed to a woman to bring forth children. Yeah. Is that right? That's right. My God, then while they're in the body, my God, they have to be nurtured, just like the child in the body of the mother has to be nurtured, my God. Is that right? That's right. My God, so it is, my God, when you're in church, my God, you have to be born again. My, is that right? Yeah. My God, so the nature, my God, of a man, the nature of a woman, my God, all oh, that's within the body. Yeah. So therefore, when he said, behold, my mother and my brethren, I'm my God, talk about both natures that will be in God's church. Yeah. 
Do you understand? All right. Our pastor's back again. All right. Still in Matthew 12, we'll start again at verse 46. Let's go back to work. While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without desiring to speak with him. Mm -hmm. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. What's the difference between a brother and one that's called the brother? Called the brother. The Bible talks about both. Right. A brother versus one that's called a brother. In the book what of, is the difference? Amen. Listen at this. Now in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 5, we'll start at verse 9. I wrote unto you an epistle not to keep company with fornicators. Not to keep company with fornicators. Yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world. And? Or with the covetous or extortioners or with idolaters. What else? But then must ye needs go out of the world. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother, If any, any man that's called a brother to be a fornicator or covetous. Huh. Huh. To be a fornicator or covetous. Want somebody else's anything. Right. What else? Or an idolater. An idolater. Or a railer. A railer. Or a drunkard. A drunkard. Or an extortioner. This is what God telling you not to keep company with. Right. Call the brother. So here you have one that's a brother. One scripture says, I believe there is no greater love than one that lay down his life for who? Brother. So, are you a brother indeed? Mm. And you're not willing to die for him? Mm. Do you love him the way Jesus said? Amen. Because Jesus said there is no greater love. Yeah. So, if you have a brother and you're not willing to die for him, yeah. now I ain't willing to die for nobody that's of the devil. I don't care if you're flesh and blood, and I don't care if you come to church. <laughs> if you ain't of the, if you of the devil, I ain't willing to die for you, not even with you. That's right. That's but right. if you're a brother indeed, indeed. That's right. Then the, the Bible says. That's right. There's no greater love. Isn't that what it said? Yeah. So Jesus was our example. Here we come. His mama and his brothers out there waiting for him to talk to him. Mm -hmm. There was a part of him related to them, and there was a part of him there were no relation. That's right. Now, when it come to church, spirit is closer than blood. Yeah. I can show you that in the Old Testament. Yeah. In my opening statements, I was talking about death. Well, Moses did die. Yeah. But the Spirit select Joshua. That's right. And yet Aaron was Moses' blood. That's right. Do you see what I'm talking? Amen. But the Lord knew what was in his blood and what was in Aaron was not in Joshua. Right. In other words, Aaron was a flesh pleaser, mm -hmm. a people pleaser. Amen. In other words, whatever the people want here, give them. The people would leave Aaron. Mm -hmm. People couldn't lead Joshua. Right. The reason why the people couldn't lead Joshua, there was an important thing that God gave Joshua that Aaron didn't have. That's right. See, there are certain things blood can't give it to you. Yeah. In the book of certain Numbers. Certain things is not passed down through blood. That's right. But it must be passed down from heaven. Right. Listen at this. In the book of Numbers, chapter 27. All right. We'll start at verse 15. And, and Moses spake unto the Lord, saying, Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation. You hear that? Amen. Set a man over the congregation. Over the people. Which may go out before them. Which may go out behind them. Before them. After them. Before them. You got to have a man that go out before you. That's right. That's true. In other words, God, him, then the people. Yeah. Not God, the people, then him. 
No. Mm -hmm. Not God, his wife, then him. No, no. Not God, his children, then him. No. No. It's God, him, then everybody else. That's right. Mm -hmm. Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, do what? set a man over the congregation, uh -huh. which may go out before them. Then what? And which may go in before them. And? And which may lead them out. Amen. Do what? And which may lead them out. That's true. Lead them out? Lead them out. Do you know it's a job leading you away from the devil? Oh, yeah. There's a job leading you out from sin. That's right. Because sin don't push you away. No. Sin say, come on here. Amen. Isn't there, is there some sin you don't want to stop doing? Oh, yeah. There's some sin you don't feel like stop doing. No. Sometimes people say, when I was a sinner, I lived a miserable life of sin. Were you miserable? Mm. Or were you having fun? Having fun. Some of you more miserable following God than you were following the devil. Lord. <laughs> eh? That's right. Glory to God. What did he say? And which may lead them out. Lead them out. It's a tough job. Leading the people of God out of bondage. Amen. <clears throat> because I got the task of showing them the importance of getting out the bondage. And some fools want to tell me the necessity, how it's needful for them to stay in bondage. That's right. That's a little bit while longer. Yeah. Uh -huh. And which may lead them out. Uh -huh. And which may bring them in. Lead them out and bring them in. And bring now, them wait in. a minute. My job is to lead you out of the world and bring you in. Right. But where am I bringing you into? Christ. Christ. Lead you out. Bring them in. Bring you in. Mm -hmm. Can't lead yourself. No. And you ain't taking yourself in. No, no. Bible said, I can you hear without a preacher? I can you preach except to be sent. Right. Uh -huh. That the congregation of the Lord mm -hmm. be not as sheep which have no shepherd. Do you see that? That's right. That the congregation of the Lord be not as sheep. You don't want to be as sheep. Which have no shepherd. No shepherd. If I die, you got to have a leader. You have a leader. And God got to put in him the same thing he put in me. That's right. He got to, in order for him to lead them people right, and in order for him to put God first. Yeah. Same thing that God put in Moses, he put in Joshua. Have you noticed what God told Joshua? As, As I with was with Moses, so shall I be, so shall I be with you. With thee. God wasn't with Aaron like he was with Moses. No. Had nothing to do with blood. No. Had nothing to do with relatives. No. And we won't have nothing to do with relatives either. That's right. If God take me out of this world, it will have to be God. Have to be God. To raise up another. Yeah. And then God got to be with him. Yeah. And that don't mean that brother got to be here from America either. That's true. That's true. Yeah, that don't mean God gonna get someone right out of headquarters either. That's true. Not at all. That's right. Who is my mother? Who is my mother? Sister. And who are my brothers? And who's my brothers? Brethren. But what? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples. He stretched forth his hands to his followers. And said, Behold, look, my mother and my brethren. Look. Hmm. Look. Look. My mother and my brethren. What, what was Jesus saying? Mm -hmm. That the church is closer to him than the flesh. Yeah. The church is closer to him than the flesh. That's right. Under one heading though. However. Under one heading. That's right. Under one heading. That's right. What is that? Now in Matthew 12 and verse 50. That's what? For whosoever shall do the will. Glory to God. Amen. I don't care if you are in the church. That don't make you close. No. Mm, no. You can be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue, and far away from Jesus. Far away. I just want to clear that up That's before right. some nuts say, yeah, 
I'm closer to him than his own flesh and blood. And you of the devil, get away from here. Get away. Do you hear what the Bible says? For whosoever shall do the will of my Father. Do the will of my Father. Which is in heaven. What? The same. No, someone different. The same. Same. The same as what? Is my brother. Oh. Amen. If you want to be a brother. Yeah. And. And sister. And sister. And mother. And mother. Yeah. And, be, and look, all three categories is in the church. That's right. You got brothers. You got mothers, mothers and you got sisters. Amen. But for you all, all those categories to be one, mm -hmm. you got to do what? Shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven. You're not one if you're not doing God's will. No. Are you listening? That's right. If you're not doing God's will, you're not a brother. That's right. And you're not a sister. Not, not one. And you're not a mother. Amen. You can't be a brother to another brother backbiting him. No. You can't be a real sister to another sister and you jealous of her. That's right. I don't care if you got the Holy Ghost. That's right. That's right. Amen. 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 Did you hear? For whosoever shall do the will. Whoever. Whoever shall do the will. Of my father. Notice he didn't say do the will of the flesh. No. Jesus pointed to the spirit. Right. Point to the spirit. Do the will of what? My father. The spirit. Which is in heaven. Amen. You're not a real sister to another sister and you lie on her. Yeah. That's right. You're not a real brother to a real brother. Hey, are you, you lying on him? No, you ain't a real brother. Amen. Question and make it quick, brother. All right. 1824, then let me get back to where I'm working. I want to focus right there. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 24. Yes. A man that hath friends. A man that hath friends. Must show himself friendly. Must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Yes. That's it. Now, when the Bible said a man that hath friends must show himself friendly, meaning he got to know how to treat people. Right. He got to know how to deal with people. Yeah. The only one that stick closer than a brother is God. Yeah. Amen. Even a real brother may fail you. Right. He may get sick. Yeah. He may can't be there. That don't mean he don't want to be there, but he may can't. Right. So you got to get someone that can stick closer and better. That's God. That's God. I can't hear you. Yes. Presenting yourself as a friend and being a friend is two different things. Right. Somebody can present themselves as a brother. That don't make them a brother. That's two different things. Yeah. Did not Abraham, did not the devil appear to Abraham as an old man? Yeah. And like he wanted to give him some encouragement, right. but he was his enemy. Was his enemy. Did not sit in the pit unto Isaac as a young man mm -hmm. and wanted to come as someone that's working? No, but was an enemy. So in the Bible, talk about present yourself friendly. Yeah, show him. That simply means how to show yourself. So that's it. How to have a good character. Right. A good attitude. Yeah. Not being disrespectful or obnoxious or foolish. That's right. Knowing how to deal with people. Yeah. That's what that word friendly means. Friendly. You can present yourself friendly to an enemy. Yeah. When I'm debating a man who hate God, I present myself friendly. friendly. But that rascal I'm debating is my enemy. That's right. Yeah? That's right. My enemy from the church of God in Christ going to be here. Yeah. To debate me, you believe in three gods, you're not my friend, you're an enemy. It's an enemy. That's and I'm right. going to present myself friendly. Friendly. And beat my enemy. Amen. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. Now, there's the pretense of a brother. Yeah. Bible says it this way. Having a form of, God. of godliness. Form of. 
having a form of godliness cover a large category. That's right. Preachers have a form of godliness. They're false prophets. Yeah. You got men that got a form of godliness. They pretend that they're brothers until they're able to get what they can out of you, use you and abuse you and trying to undermine you. Yeah. Sisters can have the appearance of a form of godliness. They claim they're your sister and they don't want no be your sister. They may want your husband or want your uncle or may want your son. Right. A woman may appear to be friendly. Got a form of God. She just wants your money. That's right. A man may appear to be friendly. Got a form of God. He just wants your body. That's true. So having a form covers a whole lot. Covers a whole lot. Now, how do you define friend? Friend. Hmm. How do you define it? Yeah. Because the Bible itemizes it. That's right. That's right. Our definition of a friend and God's definition of a friend is not the same. In the book of God's definition of a friend is too in depth for the carnal mind. Oh, yeah. This generation, you know what the ideology of a friend is? Favors. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Favors. If you do for me, if I do for you, shouldn't you do for me? Well, if I don't do for you, does that make me less of a friend? And if I do do for you, does that make me a friend? Right. Let me say it again. Yeah. If I don't do for you, do that make me less of a friend? And if I do do for you, does that prove my friendship because I've done something? Amen. No. Because the devil do plenty. Have you heard of being undermined by gifts? Yeah. The Bible says there are some that's a friend just at the table. That's right. If thou wouldest get a friend. Oh, listen, listen. Now listen the, at this. Now in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, and we're at verse 7. All right. If thou wouldest get a friend. If you would. Get a friend. Get a friend. Prove him first. And be not hasty to credit him. Prove him. Prove him. This thing ain't good for something other than holding my pants up. Prove him. Prove him first. You mean to tell me somebody's a friend because they give you money? Mm. Somebody's a friend because they buy you something? Lord. Somebody's a friend because they listen at your conversation? Yeah. A person can pose as a friend and listen at you vent, and they just pose as a friend to get your personal business out of you. That's right. Are you that naive? That's right. Presents and gifts blind the eyes. What? Presents, Presents and gifts. Give chapter and verse. Now in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 20 and verse 29. Presents and, and gifts. gifts blind the eyes of the wise. The eyes of who? Of the wise. Amen. Amen. So this is people narrow perception of friendship. Yeah. Well, if I do for you, you should do for me. And if you don't do it, that's a devil standard. Mm. True friendship, the question is this, not what did you do, right. but what is the motives behind what's being done? That's right. And I ask that. Amen. What's the motive? What's the motive? Behind what's being done. That's right. Oh, I, I know, I know he care about me because he spend money on me. Pimp spend money on hoes. Amen. When you're naive, oh, they ain't gonna spend money on someone they don't care about. Are you that foolish? The gift of a fool. Listen, even fools give gifts. That's right. Do you hear the Bible talking? Now in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 20 and verse 14. Give chapter and verse again. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 20 and verse 14. What is it? The gift of a fool. The gift. 
of a fool. So the question is this, hmm. who's spending money on you? Amen. What's spending money on you? What is his motive? Yeah. What is her motive? Mm. If your friendship is based upon what a person can do for you, you don't even know what a friend is. You ain't, you ain't got a clue what a friend is. Preach it, man. It's all in here too, Pastor. You a friendly amateur. <laughs> That's right. You're an amateur to what friendship is. That's right. Listen. The gift of a fool shall do thee no good when thou hast it. The gift of a fool won't do you no good when after thou, you get it. When Hold thou it right there. Right. Because most people say, well, I don't understand that. If he buy me a car, it's doing me good. I can get to point A and point B. If he buy me a house, I can live in it. If he buy me clothing, I can wear it. So it's doing me plenty of good. Right. None of it, when it comes from a fool, is doing you no good. any good. No good. What makes it not do any good is the objective and the motive that was behind it. Right. For, he, for he looketh to receive. What? He looketh to receive. You see, a lot of times the person buys you something you accepted and they got a different motive behind it. That's their way of owning you. That's right. That's what it meant. It don't do you no good because now they got you in a position where they want you to be and that is oh I got to do something for him now because he done this he done that right. or oh, I got to do something for her now because you know she done this and done that now oh, wait a minute amen who is giving it the wise mm. are no good rotten selfish evil fool the evil fool That's right. Listen. The gift of a fool shall do thee no good when thou hast it. A gift of a fool don't do you no good when you get it. Neither yet of the envious for his necessity. Neither yet for the jealous for their necessity. For he looketh to receive many things for one. Amen. I told you. Right. That's why I don't do you no good. No good. You're just being set up. Yeah. So then they feel like you owe them. You're obligated. Right. And you spend your life trying to pay them back. That's right. That's right. They're not trying to help you. No. They're not trying to be there for you. No. They're not trying to look out for your well-being. No, no. They got a whole different motive and a whole different agenda wherein you don't benefit. Right. But because you don't know the meaning of the gift and the motive behind the gift. Right. And you can't know the motive and the objective of the gift unless you know the heart of the giver of ahead. the gift. That's right. Talk to me. Amen. That's right. You don't know the heart of the giver of the gift. Why would you be that ignorant to call him or her so quick? Your friend. friend. Sometimes gifts imprison you. Yeah. Behind the eyes. Gift blind you to his real objective. That's true. To her real motives. Amen. And by the time you wake up, it's too late, man. She done drained you dry. Yeah. Or he done drained her dry. Amen. Amen. Marriage is a gift. It's a gift. She is his gift. He is her gift. But what's the motive behind it? Yeah. Is it true love? Yeah. Or is it to see what I can get out of her or out of him? Yeah. Because she can be next thing a fool for a husband. That's true. And he can be accepting a leech for a wife. Amen. She cared nothing about him, only what she can get out of him. Yeah. He cared nothing about her to use and abuse. Right. 
So, so that's a large territory, don't it? The gift of a fool, fool, fool. A, 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 a. shall be no, no good when thou yeah. a man buy you a, a car, keep you in prison. Yeah. And then you get so caught up in the materialistic gift, you call that love. Love. No, that's materialism. Amen. Love is bigger than materialism. Yeah. Love exceeds cars, houses, shoes, pocketbooks, suits. Yeah. Oh, he loved me. Based upon what? We bitch you, but you what? What? Amen. You fool. That's a, that's a fool. That's right. Well, she loves me. Based upon what? Yeah. She has sex with me. Roaches have sex. Go ahead. That's why every time you turn the light on, they run. Amen. They don't want you to see, to see, to see, to see, to see, to see them. Them, 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 them. Yeah. Now, let's deal with love and sex from the, from the Bible. The Bible, Bible has never called sex a act of love. Of love. Nope, nope. Most people ain't never thought of that. Amen. God! No. Yeah. Have never called sex. Never did. An act of love. No, no, no. The colonel mind called sex love. Right. That way when he sin and do it, he don't call it for what it is. It ain't no man go to that woman, sweetheart. Hey, come on, baby, baby. You know what? How about me? How about me cake tonight? <laughs> say that. Say that. That woman said, you know. I will admit to do. Man. Turn to no. and say and counsel. I, I ain't never give my body to a man unless I love him. And then when I challenge their statement with the Bible, they got to backtrack and say, man, Pastor Jennings, I, I thought. Uh huh. Yeah. I thought. Yeah. I remember years ago, and I often make this parable. I was in a session trying to educate a man almost 50 years old. For a man can't love you and a woman can't really love you, they don't love themselves, it ain't gonna happen. Right. Person don't, the Bible says love your neighbor as who? Self. If you think little of yourself, you ain't gonna think much of somebody else. Mm. If they don't like themselves or love themselves, they're gonna treat you just as wicked, wicked and evil because that's the way they are about themselves. Right. So I asked the brother, I said, what is the love? I knew he didn't know. He was going on 50, but that didn't mean nothing. He didn't know. He said, he looked at me like I was trying to get him to pass the spelling bee. He looked. <laughs> I said, is there a problem? I said, let me ask you again. I hit my desk. What is love? He said, Lo love is sex. Wow. That was his blank statement. His wife looked at him like, she, like he lost his mind. Hmm. And I didn't expect no more out of him than that. <laughs> so, I said, is this the only woman you was with? He said, no, you know, I was out there before I got married. I said, did those other women love you? <laughs> yeah. Wow. She responded to him, why did you ruin my life then? Mm. He said, you can't, and I told her, in a session, I said, he don't love himself. It's impossible for him to love you because he don't love himself. She said, you think? I said, give it time. He's going to admit it. God's going to make it happen. So help me God, it did. Hmm. He said, it's impossible for me to love you because I don't love myself. I looked at it and just said, <laughs> just like my father used to do me. It ain't a man can love a woman or a woman can love a man. If they don't love themselves, Jesus made it plain. 
Love your neighbor as 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 yourself. As yourself. Are you listening? Amen. What did he say? The the gift of a fool. The gift of a fool shall do thee no good when thou hast it. Ain't gonna do you no good when you have it. Neither yet of the envious for That's why it's not good for a woman to be materialistic. That don't mean that it's wrong to love nice things. It don't mean that at all. It don't mean that at all. Liking material things and loving material things. Oh man, two different things. Two different things. If a man can't afford something, that woman won't pressure him. Right. And it doesn't matter if your couch is about to fall in and every time you sit down, the springs is on your hips. Every time you get up, you have circles. Amen. You can't afford it. You can't afford it. True love, you're not trying to compete against each other. And that man ain't trying to compete with his neighbors. Right. And their wife is not trying to compete with her neighbor. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. Listen. For he looketh to receive many things for one. He he giveth little. He give little. And upbraideth much. And upbraideth much. He openeth his mouth like a crier. He opened his mouth like what? Like a crier. Like a what? Like a crier. A crier? A crier. Amen. You know, when someone break out and crying, they make a lot of noise. Yeah. There's some men can act pitiful. Yeah. And then get her sympathy. That's right. There's, There's some women man. that can act pitiful. Yeah. Just to get what they want out of him. Right. Don't need no money, but they go to him. <laughs> you can ask them, well, how you doing? First thing they bring up, money. Money. That's true. How you doing? How's, how's everything? Everything's fine, but I need twenty thousand dollars. Twenty thousand dollars. My Lord, prior. I remember, and you got brothers that take advantage of brothers like that. Yeah. Years ago, I was in Fredericksburg, Virginia, and I had a so-called brother. <laughs> he had a large family, and he said he needed some money to put food in the house. Well, I don't want his family to go hungry. Took out some money, gave it to him. He said, I'll pay you back. If you can't put food in your children's mouth, how you gonna pay me back? So I just said, don't worry about it. Right. So after that, the brother left. Went home. So during the church break at lunch, i never forget me, Deacon Network, who passed on now, Brother Haman, Brother White and some other brother. Brother Edward said, we were just sitting down there. He said, well, brother so-and-so, I said he needed some help with his family and gave him a few hundred dollars. I said, huh? I said, Ed, I, 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 I just gave him some money. Hmm. Brother Hammond said, wait a minute. I just gave him some money. Brother White used this term. He said, he hit me up too. So with us combined, he got some money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, the Bible says you'll reap what you sow. You cannot use a person and then think you're going to get away with it and think you have benefited you not you think you benefited because you got what you want out of the person? Well, God will get even with you, yes. and He'll do it in the most unlikely form. Right. When you truly love a person, you don't mind giving. That's right. If you can, and if you can't give, the person will love you just the same. That's right. See, God is not a fool. The reason why God never associated sex with love, suppose something happened to your wife and she's in a wheelchair and she can't perform. Then what? You ain't gonna love her the same? 
if it take you to have sex with your wife to measure your love, you don't love her at all. Amen. Talk to me. Amen. You don't love her at all. That's right. You got to be a cheap, low down, good for nothing, worthless human being to put sex on the same level of love. It's not the same level. Amen. If I have a stroke and I'm and I'm incapacitated from waist down, yeah. then my wife say, well look, <laughs> I still have knees. I don't care how crippled you are. <laughs> and if I can't get it from you, honey. If she will do that to me, she ain't never loved me from day one. Right. If I would do that to her, I would, I would love her from day one. Love outweighs a bed. That's right. Did you hear what I said? Amen. That's why some folk anxious to get married. They don't want what marriage consists of. Yeah. They just want to have sex. But the love ain't there. Love's not there. That's right. Glory to God. Amen. Feel much better now. Come on, brother. What is that? He, he opened his mouth like a crier. He opened his mouth like, like a crier. Like a crier. Do you know when someone is really in pain versus seeking sympathy? seeking sympathy? So they can set you up to be used? Right. Did you fall for a sales pitch? Amen. I love you, baby, I love you. And he told you that so much, you believe it? Yeah. And your blind belief right. got you at the altar? That's right. Just to find out later, he hates your guts? Amen. Found out later she can't stand you. Yeah. Mm. Did you hear? That's right. Come on. He he giveth little. He give little. And a braid is much. A braid is much. He openeth his mouth like a crier. Yes. Today he lendeth. Today he lends. And tomorrow. And tomorrow will he ask it again. When he asks it again. Such an one is to be hated. Wait of, a minute. Mm. Such a one is to be hated. Is to be hated. Of God. Of God. And man. What kind of person is that? A user. A user. I have no respect for no man or no woman that will use another. You're no good as a human being. Right. Because a user make it habit. That's right. That's why it's not wise to always tell somebody what you got. Amen. A person can have the appearance that they make a lot of money. That don't mean they do. Right. They're just smart in how to manage it. That's right. Is that right? Amen. 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 Come on, sir. The fool saith, I have no friend. Ah, the fool said. I ain't got no friends. I have no thank for all my good deeds. I have no what? I have no thank. I have no thank. For all my good all deeds. All my good deeds. And they that eat my bread. They that eat my bread. Speak evil of me. Speak evil of me. How oft? Now, be careful who you surround yourself with. Yeah. Jesus made a plain who is my mother, sister, and brother, but he that doeth the will. Someone that's striving to do God's will sincerely. That's I don't right. mean you sit back and try to prejudge them because they don't look a particular way in your eyes. They ain't got to look a particular way in none of your eyes. Amen. Only in the eyes of God is what matters. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. I have helped many people through the years. And if I help them well, that means my wife have helped them because we won. I have never asked an individual to pay me back. 
I remember I made that statement in Mobile. <laughs> and one of the ministers called me. I was making an example. And uh, I was saying how, you know, I've never lent no one money and asked him to pay it back. Mm -hmm. Because if, I, if, they, if everybody would pay me back, I'll, I have some money. Some money. I'll have some money. All these years I've been pastor, yeah. I'll have some money. <laughs> so one sister came to one of the brothers in Mobile. <laughs> came to Brother Martin. Brother Martin called me and he screamed laughing on the phone. <laughs> he said, remember you was making that example about lending and whatnot and, and, and helping? Uh, how you made the statement, how you have never... Uh, lend on money and then ask to pay it back. You just give it to him, tell him forget it. I say yeah. They say a sister <laughs> asked me to call you and said, "Tell Pastor Dennis, let me borrow five thousand dollars because he ain't gonna ask for it back anyway." I told him, "Go tell that sister go get a job and go to work." Amen. He said, man, when she came to me and said that, I looked at her like she lost her mind. <laughs> he said, the man got seven kids. Oh. You think he just going around freely giving? <laughs> <laughs> Took that and ran with it. And all I was making an example from the Bible. Right. If any of you ever become a millionaire, don't broadcast it. Amen. Because somebody in here going to be your first cousin. Yeah, they will. Somebody going to be your first cousin. Right. They're going to be the same one you see in church all these years. Amen. Moment you give up and about thanks to God I've been praying for God to make me a millionaire and I thank God for he did it. Before you know it, did you know that I'm with your, I'm, I'm your, I'm your first cousin on your late, late, late granddaddy's side? My Lord. Lately. <laughs> That means you came up here too late too. Amen. Love money. Amen. When you love money, you get an evil heart. Yes, you will. When you love money, don't be surprised what a person will do to get it. Right. When you love money, you will degrade yourself. Yeah. And you will lower your standards just to get what you want. That's right. You will sell your soul to the devil. Sell your soul. To get what you want. That's right. Why you think preachers, these false prophets, love money so bad until they lie on God and tell the church, the Lord told me to tell you, God ain't told them nothing. Amen. But because they don't have no respect for God, no fear for God, they love for money outweighs they love for God. Yeah. They take God and throw him under the bus. That's right. And they will exalt that dollar above the God of heaven. Yeah. Are you listening? Amen. Listen. Now back in the book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 6. Now we're at verse 5. Listen at this. Sweet language. Uh-oh. Amen. Sweet language. Will multiply friends. Amen. Sweet language will do what? Sweet language will multiply friends. The Bible never said the friends that will be multiplied are real. No, no. You know why the Bible said to multiply friends? Multiply friends. Let's explain sweet language. Yeah. Sometimes a quiet like demeanor or a non-confrontational character sometimes is misinterpreted for weakness. So the one that may be trying to befriend you sometimes can be trying to befriend you not to be a real friend. They just think you're not one that will stand up for yourselves and put them in check. Right. So they get close to you with the objective of using you or dominating you or taking advantage of you. And the moment you rise up and like, oh, oh no, you ain't. Then they say, you are the devil. That's right. That's right. Amen. I done had people come to first church. 
thinking they can get what they want out of me. When they found they couldn't get it, they got out of here. Out of here. I've been offered everything you can think of, from houses to cars to large bank accounts. My Lord. And all the offers hung on one thing. If I would change my Bible stand, and I had no problems telling all of them, no, 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 no. no. Amen. God is larger than a house. Yeah. God is larger than a bank account. God is larger than anything under the sun. If God ain't first in your life, whatever is there shouldn't be there. Yeah. It ain't nothing should be first in your life other than God. Amen. It ain't nothing should be more important in your life other than God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Do you understand? Amen. Do you hear what it says? Sweet language. Sweet language. Will multiply friends. Hmm. I don't mean those friends are real. Sweet language. Sweet. Yeah. Multiply friends. Multiply. What kind? At a fair speaking tongue. At a what? A fair speaking tongue. A fair speaking tongue. Will increase kind greetings. It never said the fair speaking tongue is real. No. Because Satan is a fair speaker. Yeah. And it would do what? A fair speaking tongue will increase kind greetings. It'll increase. That's positive and negative. That's right. Because I believe in the seventh chapter of Proverbs when it talks about the prostitute. Yeah. It says with fair speech. Right. Fair speech. Right. She kissed him and calls him, calls him to yield. Calls him Fair to speech. Yeah. Tell him how nice he looks and how wonderful he's built and how good he dressed and how good he smells. And for that, she after that she turned him to an ox. Right. The Bible says an ox run to the trough. You should be able to accept the compliment without the compliment putting a noose around your neck. Mm. That's why we always tell all of our sisters, if a person bonk their horn at you, don't turn your head. Amen. And don't be so conceited that if someone compliments you, you tell them, I know, because they can be lying. That's true. That's true. Am I right, sir? Amen. Sometimes a man compliment the ugliest thing living to get what he want out of him. Because there's some men, they'll knock up anything. Yeah. I don't care if you look like a scorpion. I had, a, I, had, I had brothers tell me straight up, Pastor Jennings, I do anything, anything. I don't care what it is. I had a brother here, he backslid. He said he'll lay with anything. Man, woman, dog. He said I lay with a dog. Yes, he did. What a fool. He said I lay with a dog or a cat. What a fool. He's wicked. Oh my God. Dog scrambling and howling and he's trying to grab it by his tail. So because somebody compliment you, that doesn't mean that they're telling you the truth. Amen. Nor does it mean that they mean what they're saying. That's right. We become naive to motives yeah. and objectives. Yeah. Amen. What is the motive behind it? What's the motive? What is the objective? Amen. 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 Give me, uh, I believe, the book of Samuel, Tamar. Right. And Abner. That's right. I want to show you blood. Abner. And Tamar, right. sons of David, and daughter. Yeah. There's a fella, he was so crazy about his blood sister until he was faking like he was sick. Yeah. Because he wanted her to make some cakes. So to get the cakes made, he pretend like he was ill. Listen at this, folks. In the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 13. 
And we'll start at verse 1. All right. And it came to pass after this that Absalom, the son of David, Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister. He had a good looking sister. Whose name was Tamar. Name was Tamar. And Amnon, the Who? Amnon, Amnon, the son of David, loved her. Who was in love with his own blood. Right. All right. And Amnon was so vexed that he fell sick. Listen, years ago when I was coming up, I mean, times just change. When I was coming up, you may can leave your daughter or your son with your relative or uncle. Now, folks are so crazy, your own relatives will try to get your children. That's right. Amen. Amen. Listen. And Amnon was so vexed. Amnon was so vexed. The New Testament used the term lasciviousness, meaning an outrageous, extreme lust, and there is no boundaries to what you will do to get what you want. Right. You don't care who you hurt in the process. You don't care who you mentally and emotionally damage in the process. That's right. Because you're too selfish to care. Amen. Listen. And Amnon was so vexed. Amnon. Was so vexed that he fell sick for his sister Tamar. He fell sick, sick for who? For his sister Tamar. All right, let's look at spiritual too. Yeah. You got some men so low they act like they sick to get that sister to come to their house. Are you bed stricken? Yeah. But he got out the bed to answer the phone. I need something, you know, when you come over here, fix me something to eat, I can't hardly walk. walk. feel like my tongue is swollen, about to stick to the root of my mouth, I'm about to die. About to die. I'm going to see Jesus any moment now. I'm coming to join you. That's right. Uh-huh. <laughs> the big one is coming. Amen. You know, some of us are just too devilish naive. Yeah. Some of us think we know and don't know nothing. Right. We are so green. Yeah. Innocent in our thinking. But just straight up dumb. Dumb. A dumb as a brick. And you can't get dumber than that. No. These blocks are dumb. <laughs> Amen. They have no knowledge. No knowledge. About anything. That's right. They can't even be taught. That's right. That's the way some people are. Amen. You can try to tell them, to get them to see, they'll fight you tooth and nail. They'll listen to their inexperienced peers first, who's just as naive as they are, but they won't listen to wisdom. Amen. Listen. And Amnon was so vexed. Amnon was so vexed. That he fell sick for his sister Tamar. He pretended. Hmm. He fell sick for his sister Tamar. For she was a virgin. She was a virgin. And Amnon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. Wait a minute. You know, when that lust gets you bad enough, you won't think it's that hard. Right. He thought it was hard to hard. do anything to her. Right. Uh -huh. But Amnon had a friend. <laughs> you got a friend in me. <laughs> Amen. If you want to be like the devil, you can always get a friend in your amen corner. That's right. Is that right? That's right. Now, I want to show you the relation of his friend. Listen. But Adnan had a friend whose name was Jonadab. Yes. The son of Shemaiah, David's brother. It was his own cousin. <laughs> That's right. Wow. All in the family. Amen. Cousin ain't got good sense. Abner ain't got good sense. My Lord. Cousin. Cousin. You ever had cousins and aunts and uncles looking at you like you ain't related to them? No. Have you ever seen that? Yeah. Cousins, uncles, and aunts looking at you like you ain't related to them. Amen. Ain't no uncle got to been looking at his niece like it's, like it's just some girl in the some street. Girl. No way. That's why we often tell brothers don't have your daughter and nobody else's child yeah. standing between your legs. That's right. They don't belong there. 
That's right. You don't have nobody's child standing between your legs. That's right. Amen. Amen. Come on. But Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab. Amnon had a friend named Jonadab. The son of Shemaiah, David's brother. His wicked cousin. And Jonadab was a very subtle man. Sneaky, yeah. ungodly, wicked, full of the devil. That's right. Now you got some folk got the devil in them. Then you got some folk full of the devil full like you're full of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. <laughs> and, and he said unto him. What? Why art thou being the king's son lean from day to, to day? Uh, Wilt thou not tell me? What is it? And Amnon said unto him, I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. I love Tamar. Tamar. My brother Absalom's Incest. sister. Incest. Yeah. Incest. Yeah. Love it. Incest is allowed in a whole lot of religions. Yeah. No little girl should be in trouble if her father is bathing her. No. The father should be able to put powder on his girl. No problem. With no problem. No problem. Without looking at her and then bringing harm to her. That's right. You are pervert. You're not a father. That's a pervert. Same thing with mom. Mama should be able to put baby oil on her little baby son. Yeah. Without bringing harm to the son. That's right. Now let me broaden it. To you sisters that got a child or children out of wedlock. Yeah. And you got a mind to get married. You cannot no longer look at your own feelings. And look at your own needs because you're not the only one in the picture right you got to look at your children and yourself otherwise than that you put your children at risk that's right with somebody who claim be some holy bum amen you may as well face the reality of it if you got a daughter and then that fella may be interested in you the reality is there's two birth canals in the house. That's right. That's right. Amen. 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 How you gonna not know a man and then just say and, and then give that man your child and take him for take your little baby for a ride? Well, I can trust him. How you know? No, he go to first church. <laughs> He got the Holy Ghost. Hmm. He's always in the spirit. What kind? What kind? Preaching. Preaching. Am I right, I said? Amen. I don't care who's offended by it. If you're not a pervert, it won't bother you. That's right. This message is insulting to pervs. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. Only a pervert is insulted by this. Only a pervert. Amen. A man that's a real man, when that woman have child or children, then your husband should be able to look at your daughter as if it's his. That's right. Without a drop of lust the size of a gnat's tear Amen. that come out of his eyes. Very, very small. Amen. Amen. That woman should be able to leave home, go shopping. That's right. Amen. And ain't got to put a some type of homing device on her daughter. Yeah. I'm telling you, this is the way things are now. The way things are. So-called stepdaughters and stepsons, and I say so-called because the Bible don't use that term. No. If, if my wife would have had a daughter or children, and if we would have gotten married, I would never address them as step. Step what? I'm going to call them my son and my, my daughter. I would never use the term step because the Bible don't use it. The Bible don't use it, I'm not using it. Right. If she got a child or children and we get married, then automatically they're mine. Right. I 
ain't gonna, ain't gonna call. When I introduce step. him, I ain't gonna introduce him at step. Yeah. What am I stepping on other than the floor? Amen. Amen. I said, Our children. And if she don't want me to reprimand them, then she shouldn't get married to me. Well, only I can correct them. Oh, now if we get married, we gonna correct them. That's right. That's right. Why? We are parents. That's right. Then you're gonna live under my roof and the children live under my roof, and I don't I know I don't have no say so. Right. No. <laughs> Amen. Mm -mm. Are you listening? Amen. Come on, son. And Amnon said unto him, I love Amnon Tamar. Said, I love Tamar. My no, brother no. Absalom's sister. Huh? And Jonadab said unto him, What? Lay thee down on thy on thy bed. Yes. And make thyself sick. Wait a minute. How you gonna get sick? Make thyself sick. Pretend. That's right. Have you ever met folk put on an act? Listen, you ain't got to help your tears come out your eyes. If they come, they're going to come. You ain't got to be <laughs> squinting them out. That's right. If they're going to come, they're going to come. Amen. Stop blinking. Stop trying to help it come on. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Sympathetic. Sometimes time a person act like something wrong with him. Yeah. Just to get in your arm. He act like something wrong with him. So he can get in your arm. All he want to do is hear you say, Oh, he said, he. <laughs> You said, Oh, he said, he. Oh, he. Oh, uh huh. He, oh, uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> <Amen>. <laughs> Are you listening? Amen. We're so naive. Amen. It's sad. Yeah. Can't don't know reality from formality. Mm -hmm. Take you to the cleaners. A gentleman I grew up with. Woman took him to the cleaners. He believed that she loved him and everything. He married her. Talk about trusting somebody you don't know. Put their name on your bank account. Wait a minute. You engaged to somebody? Don't go put your name on the same account. Who says the relationship gonna work? That's right. And if you did get married, brother, why she gotta close her account and take all her money and put it in yours? Well, the Bible said the head of every woman is the man. That don't mean that she, you gotta take her money. No. You liar. <laughs> Amen. Don't try to make the Bible have more meaning than what it is. What it you is. think God don't know what he mean? Right. That's right. Took him to the cleaners. Once, once her name got on that account, she took everything. Took his entire life savings and he was saving it. Just opened up a business. Took every dime. Didn't even leave him with a penny. It's something when you get a statement overdrawn. 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 Well, I just put five. Overdrawn. I just put ten. Overdrawn. But I have $50,000. All gone. Money gone. She gone. Hmm? Something come out of a relationship and they used to that man giving her cars and this and that. And if she's not getting that from another man after that other relationship fall apart, after that relationship fall apart, and if she's been used to getting that out of some ratchet man and then another man ain't dishing out all that, all right. then she got to ask herself, well, I don't know if I can love him like that. Like, feel about him the way the other one. Right. Why? Well, because he did this, he did that, he did that. Listen, will you get it in your head because a person spend money on you, that don't mean they love you? Right. All right, is everybody listening? Amen. 
Are you that dumb and that blind? Do you think because a person spend money on you, that means they love you? Sometimes they spend money to hold you hostage. That's right. Hold you hostage. Amen. And there's men that buy women houses, cars, and clothes, and don't love her at all. Oh. I have dealt with cases where men admit, oh, I don't love a Pastor Jennings. I just don't want nobody else to have him. Wow. I just don't want nobody else to have him. So they buy all this to hold you hostage. My Lord. I have met women buy a man suits and shoes and custom made wallets. Custom made wallets and all of that folly. And she admit, I don't love him. He's just something on the side for me. I guess break him off. Her words was, I break him off a few crumbs so he can stay nearby. Wow. When you're naive and inexperienced, you can't tell the difference between a real gift and a crumb. A crumb. Am I right? Amen. When you're unlearned and inexperienced and don't have knowledge, you can't tell the difference between a real gift and a crumb. crumb. What I've got to show you what a crumb is. That's right. And you, oh my God. Oh, oh. 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 And all you got was crumbs. 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 Crumb. Crumb. From the crummy one. From the crummy one. <laughs> That's right. All right, listen. Amen. I want to educate you today. Listen at this. And Jonadab said unto him, What? Lay thee down on thy bed. And? And make thyself sick. And when thy father cometh to see thee, say unto him, I pray thee, let my sister Tamar come and give me meat and dress the meat in my sight that I may see. Trap! Yep. Pretend like you're sick. Yep. So she can get in the presence. Presence. And then, when she get in your presence, mm -hmm. rape her. Right. Rape is when a man force himself on a woman or when a woman force herself on a man. On a man. It ain't forcing you. <laughs> stop. You better stop. And she grab you and you won't move. You won't. Listen. <laughs> she grab you and you don't even move her hand. You just stand there. Stop. Just <laughs> stop. My Lord, frozen. Stop. You know there ain't no rape. That's not rape. Am I right, I said? Amen. That, <laughs> there ain't no fault. No. That goes for you too, sister. Stop. Stop. And then when he back away and stop, you look at him. <laughs> One foot up like you about to fly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't mean stop. My Lord. When that woman don't want to be raped, she's fighting. That's right. She's going to try to fight, scratch, scream. Fear make her do it. Yeah. And she don't get no pleasure out of it. No pleasure. That's right. That's right. Am I right? Amen. That's why the Bible teaches the female to cover up the shame of your neckedness. Yeah. Can't go out there with deep cut necks and deep cut backs and split all in your clothes, half naked, yelling you some half naked Christian and every two legged dog whistling at you. Yeah. I remember, you know, some of the sisters often complain about it's real hot and, you know, they mean they can't wear stockings because it's hot. And I told them, I said, all right, if it's that hot and you can't wear stockings, then your skirt or your dress without excuse must be down to your ankle. Amen. 
You ain't got no stockings on, then your skirt or dress must be down to your ankle. Otherwise, in that, stocking up. Bible says that the shame of thy nakedness not appear. do not appear. That's right. It's hot? All right. It's hot. Then your skirt or dress better be at your ankle, not at your calf, not a few inches below your calf. Right. Your ankle. We know what an ankle is. Right. If you got crinkles, whatever you call it, you better have that skirt or dress down there. You can't get it down there. Better get stockings on. Get some stockings. Amen. Wonderful, brother. If you was out there in the world a sinner and you still got tattoos on, then get sleeves to cover it. Right. Cover it, whether you're a brother or a sister. I don't care how hot it is. Cover it. Amen. Cover it. Yeah. Go ahead, man. All right, listen. Go ahead. Man. Cover up that folly. Amen. That folly should not be seen in God's house. God's house. Cover it up. That's Amen. right. Listen to what it says. And Jonadab said unto him, Lay thee down on thy bed. Lay down on your bed. And make thyself sick. Make yourself sick. And when thy father cometh to see thee, say unto him, What? I pray thee, let my sister Tamar come. Uh -huh. And give me meat and dress the meat in my sight. All right. That I may see it and eat it at her hand. So Amnon lay down and made himself sick. Made himself sick. And Have you met people that made themselves sick? Self sick. When you, if you do that, just to get an insurance claim, you sin. Right. If you lie to get money from an insurance claim, you sin. It's a sin. And you're going to reap what you sow. Yeah. If you fake a fall or fake an injury, and then someone going to witness, then you're not supposed to bear false witness. That's <laughs> fraudulent. Yeah. You was in an accident and you know you wasn't hurt, don't pretend. Don't go buy a brace, ain't nothing wrong with you. You come back the next day. You wasn't even in the car. You wasn't even in town when it happened. And you walking around. That's right. Oh, we got a chance to get some money. Uh -huh. Your money will be a witness against you. It's against you. Bible say he that gather riches and not by right dies a fool. Ooh. All right. So <laughs> so Amnon lay down. Yeah. And made himself sick. And, and when the king was come to see him, Amnon said unto the king, I pray thee, let Tamar my sister come. Yeah. And make me a couple of cakes in my sight that I may eat it at her hand. Real quick. Then David sent home to Tamar saying, Go now to thy brother Amnon's house and dress him meat. So Tamar went down to her brother Amnon's house, and he was laid down. And she took flour, kneaded it, and made cakes in his sight. Yes. And did bake the cakes. Uh -huh. And she took a pan and poured them out before him. But he refused to eat. And Amnon said, Have out all men from me. Uh-oh. And they went out every man from him. Now listen, this is a blood brother. Blood brother. Tell all the men, go out, leave. And Amnon said unto Tamar, Amnon said to Tamar, Bring the meat into the chamber, come on. that I may eat. Listen, if you're really sick, it doesn't matter where you get fed. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Come on, come on in the chamber. That I may eat of so your hand. Eat of your hand. I want you to feed it to feed. me. That's right. Uh -huh. And Tamar took the cakes which she had made, and brought them into the chamber to Amnon her brother. And when she had brought them, If you know you ain't been raped, don't lie. Right. There's a lot of innocent men in jail. Yeah. That act of fornication was consensual. Right. Rape was hollered out because they heard somebody coming. That's true. There's cases where men been set up. Deliberately. To get back at him. Yeah. I've dealt with the case where a woman hired her girlfriend. 
She couldn't stand a man. Hired a girlfriend. Girlfriend got the brother in position. Amen. And after she got a girlfriend, she set it up so good. And she knew people in the police department. Gave them the time and everything. Wow. <clears throat> set up, set that guy up that she couldn't stand. Girlfriend started yelling, Rape, get off me! Rape, rape! And the guy was like, what, what you doing? What you doing? Then the police come in. She jumped up. He raped me. He raped me. And the guy was like, what, what, huh, what, what? Trapped him. Set him up. My Lord. Old folk says this. Everything that shines ain't gold. Amen. Before you be so quick yelling, you can trust him and trust her. It is written. Prove them first. Prove them first. Well, that Jenna's, I know I can trust that girl because I lay with her. <laughs> because you lay with someone, does that mean you can trust them? Don't mean that. Brother, they can be vindictive and evil and take your head off. Right. Tamar couldn't trust Abner. No, no. She was a young virgin, naive, inexperienced. She just ain't know it. Right. All right. And when she had brought them unto him to eat, he took hold of her. He grabbed her. And said unto her, come lie with me, my sister. What? And she answered him, nay, nay, my no, brother. No, my brother. Do not force me. What? Do not force me. That's what rape is. Force. Force. That's right. Not consensual. That's right. Am I right, I said? Amen. Amen. Mm. Ain't no man gonna believe you. You tell him no, you showing your teeth. <laughs> no. Ain't no man gonna believe you. <laughs> ain't gonna believe that. No. A woman ain't gonna believe you either. If she approached you, you say, no, 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 shit. I don't, don't, not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> she ain't going to believe you, brother. You stand there? <laughs> no. I ain't going to do it. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. You a big fool. A big fool. She may look at you like something wrong with you, but she ain't going to believe you. No. Listen. And she answered him, Nay, my brother, do not force me. Man. For no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Now let me educate you. Back in that time when you was a virgin, you wore a garment that was multicolored. Right. Multicolored garment. Right. If you ever genuinely violated, mm -hmm. you had to cover yourself in sackcloth and ashes and tear your clothing. Right. And then walk in public that way. Yeah. Covered with sackcloth, ashes, torn clothes as a sign to all that see you that you've been violated. That's right. All right. For no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Do not thou this folly. And I, whither shall I cause my shame to go? And as for thee, there shall, thou shalt be as one of the fools in Israel. Rape, if you rape a person, you're a fool. As a fool. All right, listen. Amen. All right. Now, therefore, I pray thee, speak unto the king, for he will not withhold me from thee, howbeit he would not hearken unto her voice, but being stronger than she, forced her and lay with her. Then you did what? Forced her and, forced her. and lay with her. That's rape. That's right. Not consensual. No. That's rape. That's rape. Which is another form of fornication. Right. Because you can have fornication with two consensual people. Then you can have forced fornication. Forced. That's true. Are you listening? That's right. All right. Howbeit he would not hearken unto her voice, 
But being stronger than she forced Wait her. Wait a minute. Stronger than she. Stronger than she. Then what did he do? Forced her. You got crazy fathers, uncles, brothers, grandfathers, yep. relatives. That's right. So-called stepdads. Yeah. Late at night in the stepdaughter's room, just standing at the door looking. Like a troll under a bridge. Amen. Looking through the keyholes That's of the right. bathroom. Right. That's right. Look just like her mama. Mm. Yeah, that's something. That's something. You're not married and got a child or children. You cannot be selfish in your marriage decisions. Yeah. You cannot just look at your feelings. You have to look at the protection of your children. Right. Who you're willing to trust with this new man. Amen. That you claim you want for a husband. Am I right, I said? That's right. I don't care how ugly it sounds, but it's real. It's real. Amen. 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 All right. Howbeit he would not hearken unto her voice, but being stronger than she, forced her and lay with her. Then Ammon hated her exceedingly. Oh. See, he got what he wanted out of her. Then what? Hated her exceedingly. All right. Hold that and go back. And first, see what did he tell his cousin. Mm -hmm. And Ammon was so in verse. Oh, back in First Samuel, Second Samuel, chapter thirteen. Okay, chapter in verse again. Second Samuel, chapter thirteen, and at verse one. What did he say? And it came to pass after this that Absalom the son of David had a fair sister whose name was Tamar. And Ammon the son of David loved her. But after he got what he wanted out of her, then what? Then Ammon hated her exceedingly. Before he got what he wanted, what? Ammon the son of David loved her. After he used her, then abused her, and raped her, then what? Ammon hated her exceedingly. Hated her. In other words, it wasn't no love. <coughs> it was pure lust. <coughs> and it was overwhelmed by the lust and taken over by it. That's right. That's right. And after he got what he wanted out of her, then what? Then Amnon hated her exceedingly. He hated her exceedingly. So that the hatred wherewith Listen he, at this. The hatred wherewith he hated her. That he hated her was with, greater than it the was love. Greater than the love. Wherewith he had loved her. I told you. After he got what he wanted out of her, his hatred right. was much bigger. Yeah. And all that love that he been claiming. That's right. Amen. That's the way some men are, and that's the way some women are. Yeah. Talk love, talk love while they're still taking what they want. Love, 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 love. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me love, 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 love. Give me, give me, give me, give me love, love. Give me love, give me love, love. Give me, give me, give me, give me love. After they done got all what they want, they hate you for you. Hate. Their retaliation against you will be so consistent. That's right. Until it be bigger than the so-called love they had. Right. That's, That's right. why arguments in many cases are good to have. Amen. Because one thing about an argument, it'll bring out what's in a person that they won't say in peacetime. Right. Because whether in argument or peace, the Bible speaks truth. Yeah. Out of the abundance the heart. of the heart, the mouth speaketh. The mouth speaketh. And sometimes the mouth won't say a thing unless it's war. That's right. Am I right, I said? Amen. War will determine whether the love changed or whether the love was real to begin with. Yes. Or whether it was ever there. That's right. <clears throat> so 
So argument has its place. You will never know the true dynamics of a relationship. If everything is ice cream, cake, and candy, and uh, and, and, and uh, <laughs> wake up every morning, hi, and, uh, and when you kiss each other, butterflies go. <laughs> and, uh, every time you kiss each other, you hear butterflies. Fluttering. <laughs> 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 Oh no, you need some lightning and thunder <laughs> and bolts. When it hit, that's true. Don't be surprised what come out of his or her mouth. Because it's there. If he hates you or can't stand you, you won't never hear him say it when it's peaceful. Right. Sometimes you may have to do something deliberately to get under his belt to bring out what's in him. You know, sometimes if your stomach too full, some folks stick their finger down their throat so they can throw up. Yeah. Then you feel better. Sometimes you got to start an argument when you ain't angry. Amen. Start an argument when you're not angry. Bring out what's in him and bring out what's in her. And the moment he said, you see, some folk need an argument for them to speak their mind. That's right. My wife will tell you, I don't got to argue with him for him to speak his mind. He's going to speak it. Huh. I'm going to say the same thing in peace times. That's true. I don't need an argument to bring out what's in me. That's true. I'm going to tell you the truth eye to eye. Yes, you will. I ain't got to argue with none of you to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you teeth to teeth, eye to eye, teeth. nose to nose. <laughs> I don't care whatever kind of argument she and I have. I'd never tell her I hate her. I'd be lying. Yeah. But when that man starts telling you, I hate you. Yeah, that woman starts telling you, I hate you. Don't you know you can outgrow a relationship? So don't say, but I'm married. Who cares? You can actually outgrow it. What do you mean? Here is one, their emotions and feelings constantly evolving. Here's another suffer from dwarfism. They emotions ain't going nowhere. Right. Sometimes a person's background hinders their ability to love. They didn't get no love as a child. So therefore, many times they are handicapped in loving somebody else. Amen. All right, listen to the old man. Go ahead, brother. We as parents, if we have a child or children, it should never be difficult for us to express to our children how much we love them. Right. If we don't find it difficult to rebuke them, to chastise them, to beat them, then we should not find it difficult to tell them, I love you. That's right. Am I right, I said? Amen. Many times before my children hang up the phone, I tell them, if they out somewhere at work or whatnot, all right, love you. Love you too. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I don't say that just to say it. I mean it. I mean it. I'm children they never been told. They love since they've been born. Yeah. All right, listen to the old man. Amen. Good teaching, brother. Some men are like big children. Well, they never said they love me. How in the world you expect for a child to tell the father that they love you when you never show them love? That's right. I came up in a home where love was shown, told, father huggers, mother huggers. Amen. That's the kind of house I came out in. Amen. Wonderful, brother. Amen. I was little, I can sit on my father's lap. He, he said, all right, I'll take you on a horse ride. But the horse ride was his leg. And when I sat there, he had grabbed the back of my pants and bounced me up and down. <laughs> he was like, oh! He said, all right, I'm tired now. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful, brother. Yeah, have my children growing up. In a hateful society hateful. like this? Amen. 
with no love in their life at all. We're living in a society where children all around the world is deprived from love. What it has done to many of them, it has damaged them mentally and emotionally. So they look for it, and they look for it in the wrong place. Because where they think they have that, it ain't love. They become victims. Go ahead. Go ahead, man. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, you yeah, listen to the old man. Amen. And ain't no brother in here stricter than I am. No. But I ain't so strict I don't know how to love my kids and my wife. Right. That's not strictness. That's ignorance. That's right. That's not discipline. That's a fool. That's a fool. Man, don't want to love his church. You shouldn't have lived with your mother. Mother didn't want another church. You shouldn't have laid with your daddy. That's right. Am I right? Amen. Amen. Are you listening to the go old ahead, man? Go ahead, go ahead. Listen. Then Amnon hated her exceedingly. Amnon. Exactly what happened. After he get all he wanted out of it, then he, then it comes out. I can't stand you. I Hate you. Yeah. Sometimes it takes the right amount of heat to bring out what's in them. That's right. Because it is written, and I'm a firm believer of the scripture. You cannot get sweet and bitter water. And bitter from water. The same family. You can't. No. Just can't. Amen. Amen. So that the hatred wherewith he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he had loved her. Yeah. And Amnon said unto her, Arise, be gone. And she said Amen. unto him, throw out. Go out. Throw her out. Arise. Be gone. No, hang around. We'll meet up later. Be gone. No, hang around. I'm going to buy you something. Be gone. Hmm. You see, there's some people, men and women, spoil. Yeah. There's good spoiling, and then there's handicapped spoiling. Right. <coughs> handicapped spoiling. It's when you're used to getting everything you want and it off to your character. Mm -hmm. Until you think that you're supposed to get anything and everything you want all the time. And you think you're supposed to have your way all the time. Yeah. And then when you don't have your way, you become negative and rebellious and you retaliate. That's right. Because something don't go the way you feel as though it should go. Yeah. Like the whole world should revolve around you. Amen. No, you're supposed to revolve around God. And God is not designed to give us everything we want. That's right. God ain't going to do it. Why would you be that big of a fool to expect someone to be towards you that God won't even be? Right. Go ahead, man. Then there's good spoiling. Man, they got a good woman, don't mind doing for her. Yeah. She becomes spoiled by it, but she's not spoiled rotten where if he don't do it, why you ain't doing this? Why you ain't doing that? Why you don't love me no more? Because you ain't you don't love me no more. You don't love me no more. Oh, you don't love me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> it's good sport. Pitiful spoil. Pitiful. Am I right? Amen. Pitiful. What do you mean, pitiful? You're so spoiled you can't even hardly function in life. That's right. Mentally and emotionally, you are dependent. And you don't know how to be independent. Right, right, right. Wonderful. Amen. Balance. Now, no, I'm spoiling your children. But also teach them the importance of independence. That's right. And spoiling is not always giving from hand to them. Right. Spoiling is not always centered around materialism as it is so faintly thought. Yeah. But Jeremiah says, when thou art spoiled, but when you do, you do. Some men can't fix their mouth to tell their children, I love them. Yeah. You ask some father, Dad, do you love me? 
What kind of question is that? What do you mean what kind of question is that? A question that they got the right to ask. That's right. Then if you think your father or your mother don't, tell them why. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Amen. Remember, love is bigger than, than an offering. That's right. That's right. Am I right? Amen. Love is bigger than a free will offering. Yeah. Get me, I want the soak it. Read fast. Then Ammon hated her exceedingly. Ammon hated her exceedingly. So that the hatred wherewith he hated her was greater Amnon. than the love wherewith he had loved her. And Ammon said unto her, Arise, be gone. All right. And she said unto him, There is no cause. This evil in sending me away is greater than the other that thou didst unto me. After he abused her, he threw her out. Threw her out. And she didn't want to go out there in that shame. That's right. Because she knew. By the law, she was forced to cover herself in sackcloth and ashes, and her, her garment got to be torn now. That's right. And then she got to walk among Israel. Yeah. And all Israel will know she's violated. Amen. All right, listen. Amen. Be quick. But he would not hearken unto her. Abuse her, they don't pay her no mind. Throw her out. Mm. Throw her to the dogs. Yeah. All right. Then he called his servant that ministered unto him and said, Put now this woman out from me. Oh, now look at what he called. Put now this woman out from me and bolt the door after her. You see the way some people change after they get what they want out of you, man? They change up on you. Yeah. They become insulting and all that stuff, degrading and disrespectful. Hmm. Talk about you behind your back. Yeah. The Bible said a man changed like the moon. Like the moon. Read fast. And she had a garment of diverse colors upon her. For with such robes were the king's daughters that were virgins apparel. Yes. Then a servant brought her out and bolted the door after her. And Tamar put ashes on her head. And rent a garment of diverse colors that was on her. And laid her hand on her head and bolted the door behind her. Bolted. <laughs> bolted the door. First they can't have their way. Sometimes they slam the door. Boom. Boom. Spoiled brat. Yeah. You ever met adults that are spoiled brats? Mm. Grow up. That's right. Life ain't designed to please us in every way we want. No way. Mm -mm. We got to make some adjustments here. Oh, yeah. All right. And Tamar put ashes on her head and rent a garment of diverse colors that was on her, and laid her hand on her head and went on crying. And Absalom, her brother, said unto her, Hath Ammon thy brother been with thee? But hold now thy peace, my sister. He is thy brother. Don't tell nobody. Regard not Don't tell story. nobody he raped you. Right. You got to be lower than a human being to rape a woman. And that woman got to be equally lower than a human being to lie and said someone did it said and they didn't. Right. Who is my mother? Who is my mother? Sister and brother. And brother. But he that do the will, the will of God which is in heaven. Same. A real brother and a real sister and mother will not deliberately try to do you harm. That's right. What makes them real is they love towards God. That's right. If they love God and real with Him first, yeah. they'll be real with you. That's right. Don't sit in judgment on them. Judge yourself. Yeah. If they're not real, you be real. Amen. They can look at you any way they want. You just be real. Yeah. Are you listening? Amen. All right. Thank you for listening, brother.